this chair. Oh, really? Our first guest is a comedian and an actor who also happens to be engaged to one of the world's biggest pop stars. His new book, Bookie Book 2, this time it's personal, is in stores. Please welcome Russell Brand. I feel very well today, thank you. Oh, good. I'm so glad. This is your first time here, and I'm, I'm happy to have you here. I'm very honored to be here in this chair. Oh, really? Yeah, I really like it. Oh, good. You can come sit in this chair anytime you want. Thank you. Do you think there will be times when it's impractical? It, if Say someone's that, in it? For example. Yes. Um, it depends on who's in it. They may uh, enjoy you sitting on their lap. It may lift the interview. Mm-hmm. They could be here, and then suddenly I'll be perched on their lap. They'll have to crane round you, but it may induce a kind of sexual energy, perhaps. Let's try it someday. Any of your guests, you can select one at random from a hat, and then I'll just come and perch on their knees, or if we feel very adventurous, further along towards the groin. <laughs> mm. <laughs> He's engaged. He can't do that. Yes. Not, not now, anyway. The conditions of an engagement prohibit that kind of midriff activity. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's talk about... Uh, I can't imagine uh, 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 knowing you when you were on different types of drugs because you really do have... I mean... Like, look at you. You don't need anything. You're very entertaining, and you, you, you know, but I can't imagine, did that, because he was, he, well, you talk about it in, in the first book, you were addicted to basically everything, right? Everything. Was there anything you weren't addicted to? Like, say vitamin C, I barely ever had any. <laughs> no vitamin <clears throat> C. Heart scarcely, unless certainly someone put into some heroin. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which is, uh, need, I, I needn't stress that heroin is very, very bad. I know that from experience right. now. Right, very, very, you were, you were addicted literally to everything. Yes, I became addicted to heroin, crack cocaine, uh, the cocaine without the, the washing it up to make it into crack, uh, amphetamines, marijuana, alcohol, moving about, looking out of windows, this position, <laughs> all of those things. <laughs> I, I couldn't stop myself, Ellen. And and uh, we should say it's been eight years. You, you're sober now, eight years? I've had no drugs for eight years. Eight years. <laughs> They're very happy for you. Oh, good, good. Ellen, my beliefs on the subject of addiction are this. Some people, I think, have a proclivity or tendency towards addiction, and it will find any outlet. It could be drugs, it could be food or self-harming. You know, and, and until you address the uh, core unhappiness within you, you'll find different manifestations of it. So I was, like, had problems in all sorts of areas. Even when I was a little kid, I think I was eating too much chocolate biscuits, watching too much telly. Then, as, as an adolescent, to put it politely, I spent too much alone, alone time in my room. <laughs> Self, I, I was interfering. Uh -huh. Too much monkey business, in the words uh -huh. of Elvis. Right. So... <laughs> so, what, what I like is that, that you have in the, your Bookie Book 2, which I love the names, the first Bookie Book and Bookie Book 2, um, I think you send a good message to, to, you know, everyone thinks that fame is going to be the answer. And, and you have a really good message for teens for fame and for 
what they think that's going to do for them. Yes, because when I was growing up, I thought I'd be a lot happier if I was famous and successful and if I had money. And I think that's because we live in a culture that uh, celebrates fame and commerce and consumerism and money. So that if you don't have those things, you feel like you're not enough. And I think we live in a culture that makes you think, oh, I'm a little bit too fat or I'm too thin or I'm not right and I don't fit in. And I think, like, you know, increasingly I've realized as I've tried to change and tried to adapt and amend and pursue these ambitions that ultimately everybody has a beauty within themselves and if you find this and accept this then you will be happy regardless of external attributes or material things Russell Brand, very smart man you are, very smart. And your book is well written, very, both books, very, very well written. I really in, enjoy uh, reading your mind. Thank you very much. Don't read it now, I'm thinking something saucy. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, writing is important to me. Uh, I really love it once I've started. I don't, and, and, like, I don't, it's really boring to start writing. People have to force me to go in a room. Uh, they deny me all other forms of activity, like I'm not allowed to eat nothing, or they disconnect the internet with, for obvious reasons, and then I'm just left with my laptop and told that I have to write, and then I will come up with stuff, because it's nice to be lost in your imagination. Yeah, I bet writing would be easy for you, because you, have, you do seem to have quite an, an imagination. Yeah, I like it. When I was a kid, right? Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't, I when I was little, I was a bit sad. So, uh, like, and my situation I wasn't very happy with, and I think living in an imaginative world was preferable to the alternative, which was reality. Mm -hmm. Then, as an adolescent, I realized that you could bolster this imaginative world through hallucinogens, mm -hmm. <laughs> which was not necessarily a good discovery. No, no, no. You, you're fine without any of that stuff, aren't you? I think that yeah, that's true, Ellen. I think that um, most of the things achievable through drugs, certainly the things that people are trying to find through drugs, are accessible through other means, perhaps like meditation or prayer or contact with some kind of higher power. Exactly, exactly. I that's much. Hope you're great. Do you meditate? Yeah, I meditate. Do you meditate every day? Twice a day I meditate. Really? Yeah, transcendental meditation. It's really, really good for you, I think. Yes, it is. It's very good for you. I like it. I, for me, it makes me... I enjoy to be connected to things that feel like... Because otherwise you can very easily get caught up in what you look like or what you want or how you felt yesterday or what you want tomorrow. Transcendental meditation, for me, is a reminder that you have access to uh, beauty constantly and that the, the important things are accessible to all of us. It's an exciting discovery. I've only just started. Good for you. And does Katie meditate as well? She don't care for that stuff. No. <laughs> she thinks uh, that, like, uh, I told her once, perhaps uh, unwisely in retrospect, that I thought that during meditation I was receiving messages from extraterrestrials. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she then adapted a rather cynical stance uh, right. <laughs> to meditation, right. thinking it's, it's mumbo-jumbo. Uh-huh. Well, y'all seem to be a really great couple, and you're getting married uh, soon. I did not get my invitation. I'm sure you're trying to be secretive about it, but... Uh, Do you want to come? Of course I want to come. All right, I'd like to have you there. All you, right. You and your missus is most welcome. Okay, well, my missus and I would love to come. Just yeah. let us know where it is, okay? I'll tell you in a less, in a more private okay. context. All right, great. Not that your studio audience wouldn't be welcome, because I've briefly scanned them, and I've never seen such a good-looking selection of yeah. people. chance I'm working and not able to go, yeah. and, and my missus can't go either, if we, if neither of us can make it, um, we wanted to give you a gift What now. is it? All right. Well, <laughs> so, here, you have, uh, These some, are for me, obviously. These are for you, right there, Jeff. Thank you. Okay. And then, oh my this word. is for her. This is amazing. See? See? Thank you. Some little Daisy Dukes. What beautiful, beautiful gifts. Yeah. And let me tell you, these will be the only messages across this area on that day. Isn't that wonderful to know? We're keeping it sacred. All right. 
Thank you so much. Bookie Book 2. This time it's personal. It's in, in bookstores. Everybody in the audience, you're getting a copy. saying that I should be friends with this person. 